Welcome to our bagger test. I know it's not allowed to call it a golden bagger, but this is a bagger test. We're going to call it a bagger test. <laughs> this way, this way. Oh, 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 oh. Chopsy's gone the wrong way. Nearly pulled out in front of a car. How's it feel? Scary. <laughs> <laughs> this is more like a <laughs> good armchair. <laughs> it is like an armchair, that. My ass yeah. isn't, it's overflowing on this seat a little bit. Can't blame the seat for that, mate. I know, there's no seat big enough for my ass. <laughs> Apart from the one on that bike. That one on that bike is big enough for my ass. I think this is the most sedate we've ever been down this road. <laughs> Definitely. Well, that's my first multi-car overtake actually on the gold wing and it's it feels fine. It's got, it's got enough, it's got enough. Go for sport mode, go for sport mode. Click the little on the right hand switch gear at the front, there's a toggle which changes the mode. Oh yeah, I see that. And then it'll shoot yeah. in sport. Yeah. I've done it. Let's see what you think to the sport. I'll put oh, mine in cha dynamic. It changed down immediately. Yeah. And it's of course you forth now. You've got the paddles. You can also do the paddles as well if you want it to change on the left. Where you know where, where that creep was is the paddle to, to, to knock it down, I think. So the sport mode on the gold wing doesn't change the suspension clearly because it's not electronic. So it's just throttle map and gearbox, I guess, yeah? Exactly, yes, that's it. Yeah, the gearbox is massively noticeable. It's holding low gears now yeah and it's also it's also i found it quite twitchy on the throttle almost it's waiting to go when it's in yeah sport it, mode. Is. It, it doesn't suit it actually but you might need it all right let's do for it third gear on the uh, bm whoa it's quick this thing there's almost no point doing a drag race because this is just oh ew, yeah exactly jesus it's got some go isn't it well it's 160 horse is a lot of power isn't it and it, it, it feels it's quick isn't it and it's 180 newton meters of torque as well so it, it's a serious engine in this, isn't it? I'm not going for any heroics today. <laughs> I've never seen you go so slow around this corner. I know. <laughs> One of my favourite corners, this. But I'm, it's just so slippery, isn't it? You're not getting your knee down today, then. Oh, this does go, though. In the real world, in this sport mode. It's not bad, is it? No, it's no slouch for what it is. The couch is no slouch. I think on any other bike today, I would personally be frozen solid. And I'm out, I am cold, but I'm but nothing compared to what I'd be like on any other bike. You really feel the cold here as well, don't you? Terrible. You're, you really yeah. feel the cold. Uh, they're amazing. You know, if I can ride one of these, we've been on the road, it must be a good hour now. And it's minus one, zero, one degrees, that sort of temperature. I think anyone could ride one of these because most people don't suffer like I do in the cold so much. Yeah, I, I do like the sporty nature of this. I have to say, I, it, I think maybe if we were doing this test in the summer, it could be a different kettle of fish, you know? Yeah, it's, it's the BMW's got it all, hasn't it? In the sense that it's, it's beautifully smooth and easy to cruise on, isn't it? But it has got a bit of a menacing edge if you want it as well. I think it's probably the best way to, it's, it's, it's good, isn't it? It has. I'm trying to think what I can compare it to because you can't really compare it to the GS because it's got way more go than the GS. Way more go than the GS, than, than you know, than the 12, 1250 GS engine. It's almost like the SW, SRR sort of power. And it sounds like that as well. It's got that, you know, that six cylinder screamer. It's a fantastic engine in this. Absolutely fantastic. It's good, isn't it? Uh, the BMW, I, I told you if, you, if you rode the BMW on a test ride, and you're looking for this sort of bike and you didn't ride any other bike, you, you definitely like it, you'll love it and it's hard to fault isn't it? I think I'm going, the quick shift and blipper seems pretty decent on it from what I've seen as well. It's, I think it's good as well and it, and it works well under light load which you ride it under quite a lot because of the style of bike and it, it's not like a lot of bikes you've got to be really you know revving them all hard on the power and it, before they're smooth and on that it's smooth. I think it's lovely. I think the gearbox, I think they've done a good job with that, really. Both incredible, aren't they? That's the point. They, they, they are a little bit different to ride for a number of reasons. The riding position is quite different. There's more leg room on the Honda. This, it's, a, it's yeah, more cosseting, probably. But the BMW's 
got a bit more versatility, I think, hasn't it? Yeah, I think the BMW would probably suit more people, a wider range of people. Oh, I've stalled it now. I think I have forgotten how to ride a motorcycle since I've been on that goal there. Spoilt me. So here we are, the beautiful city of Winchester. Winchester, we, we, we could go outside the cathedral, get a, get a picky outside the cathedral would be quite cool, wouldn't it? Because it's famous yeah, can for you, the can you, cathedral can you get at Winchester. It, uh, but not there, that's a dead end up there. Let's go round, because it's, it's over there, the cathedral. Cathedral's down there, Yeah, the road stops just there, there's a market there, there, sorry. Oh, you've got the uh, market. Yeah. After having that DCT on the touring style bike, it really works with that machine, doesn't it? Having to, having to use gears and clutches on this. I'm, miss, I'm missing that DCT. Slow speed stuff. And this is like crawling along. They're so, like the BMW and the Honda, they're so balanced. You know, to say they weigh 340-ish plus, that sort of... 370 on the gold wing. 370 gold wing. You, you really wouldn't know it. No, you wouldn't. It's, it's, it's very, very impressive. Yeah, the weight's obviously so low, and they, you know, the way they've designed the chassis and that, it's incredible. It's easy. You know, it looks intimidating, doesn't it, you sit on these. When I first got on the BMW, you know, I'd never ridden a bike like that, really. And it just, you think, God, am I even going to be able to bloody ride it? I'm not as cold as I thought we'd be turning up here, mate. No, I'm not either, actually. I thought we'd be proper chilly, but uh, we may have to use that two parking bays here. <laughs> we know you get two bikes in one bay, but I'm not sure you can with these. What's the verdict on the uh, K1600 then, Johnny? Oh, it's, it's very nice. You like it? It grows on you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very nice. It's good, isn't it? Mm. It is good. Yeah, they're both amazing, aren't they? As I say, so, you, you know, I've... Uh, I've only been riding that for a week, and it's like bloody hell. It's, it's hard yeah. to fault with that. Yeah. Ridden in isolation. In isolation, you never, yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. And this, what it does have over the Honda, which I do think is quite nice, and the suspension on the Honda is brilliant, is the fact that it's got the adjustable, electronically adjustable, and you really notice the difference between the modes. Yeah. So it just gives you a bit more versatility, because yeah. sometimes they can feel a bit wallowy, a big heavy bike, can't they, when yeah. you're moving on a bit, and it really is, the handling on that is. I mean, it's definitely the sportier bike out of the two, without mm, question. It is, yeah. It? Without, without question. Right, right, should we go in then? Let's get a coffee. Right, there's still a little bit of motorway work there, mate, isn't it? These bikes, a bit of a motorway test, and we'll do a couple of roll-ons on the motorway, just to see how much quicker the BMW is, because <laughs> it is going to be quicker. Oh, right, bit of motorway on our way to the, uh, the hovercraft. So we will be going to the other way, as I said. Now, I did a video ages ago with uh, on the V-Strom in the winter, and I went down to South Sea, and I showed the hovercraft in that video, and everyone loved it. They were like, never mind the V-Strom, we want to see more of the hovercraft. <laughs> so today, we're actually going to take a, take a ride on the hovercraft, and we're going to go across to ride on the Isle of Wight, get a bit of lunch, and then come back again. So a bit of hover travel as part of this video, because we do need to go to the Isle of Wight. For no, no, for no other reason, really, that I want to go on the other craft. One bit of tech these bikes are missing, and I'm sure it, it would be nice to have it on these, is adaptive cruise control and the blind spot detection. I mean, the, these, that would be lovely on the wing, wouldn't it, to have the blind spot detection and a bit of the adaptive cruise. Same with the BMW. I'm sure that will come, but even next year, it's, it's not on them, so you might have to wait another two years until you see that tech on them, but I think they're crying out for that. Ah, time to use the old footboards. Let's bang it in sixth gear. Get your feet on the footboards. Oh yeah, now you're talking. Now it's a, now it feels like a proper cruiser. You mate, I don't know how you're feeling on wind blast. I know we only do 50, but you don't look like your clothing's nah, moving well, like around I'm, at all. I'm getting the air, the upper part of my helmet, the air's here. So it's yeah. just here, whereas on that, you can you can like that, you're up here until you come yeah, in the air. Yeah, that's right. And I, mean, I can't ride with my visor open on this because I'm getting too much. You know, so too it's much going noise. in the visor, but on the on the wing yeah. you can ride with your, your with your visor open, can't you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's. It is comfy. It's still, even though the wing 
is more comfortable than this this is still incredibly comfortable yeah i'd agree you get used to it in minutes and it they're both just incredibly comfortable aren't they yeah especially with these footboards i know these are extra i think this is called the touring pack or something where you get the footboards i love the footboards i'd have to have the footboards coming through coming through on the wing who would have ever thought we'd have seen Gr Gregorio or the gold <laughs> ring? <laughs> oh dear, it does look nice. No, I do like that. I like the colours on that. I, I like the look of the matte paint, but I'd I could never own a bike with matte paint just because it's, you know, you, you can't do any, you know, you can't, if you get a scratch, you can't even polish it out. It's, if anyone's bought a matte bike, let us know how, how you're getting on with it. No, I think your, your buddy, Mr. and Flyer. I think he's right, you know, the gold wing is, is good. He's, he does know what he's talking about sometimes, Andy. Sometimes he gets it right. We've got your hazard lights on. I know, I don't know how I've done it. <laughs> Why is he doing that? I don't know. Why is he doing that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it there? There you go. We found him. That's just a warning, mate. It's, it does that when, you, when it realises you're starting to fall for it. It's like, warning, you're starting to light this bike too much. <laughs> Start daydreaming about ordering one and it warns you off. We can do some roll-ons in a minute. Yeah, we'll do some roll-ons in a minute and we'll see. But it's going to be difficult to make that not knock down, isn't it? It's going to knock down, isn't it? Well, no, but I think this, let, let the, I'll leave it in tour. Leave that in, leave the BM in road. You can get ready in the right gear, which is going to give you an advantage. But let's just, I'll just pin this and see how quickly I fall off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to flip them anyway. I think we're safe to say we're not going to flip them. You I'll go you... fourth gear, which is 3,000 okay, revs. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm in seventh at the moment, so he's going to have to knock okay, down. Well, when you, so I'll go when yours knocks down. So when you knock down, I'll go. No, Pretend no, no, when no, no, same down. time. Oh, Three, two, two, one, go. Yeah, this thing's a rocket ship. Yeah. This wasn't too bad, though, actually. No. It's pretty responsive, it knocks down pretty quick, yeah. doesn't it? Drop it down to 50, and then I'll stay in top gear. And we'll let yours kick down. Ready? Three, two, one, go. You went before me. I did it, I carried down to one. I did it again, did yeah, it again. No, no, you'd gone before you got down to go. <laughs> did I know? <laughs> yes, you did. I'll do Jump three, two, three, two. Referee. 50. I'm in, I'm in top gear, you'll let Ready. yours kick, kick down. Three, Three two, two, one, one. Go. go! I'm doing you! He's doing me! Uh. Yeah, with yours kick, but it's not much in it considering I'm stuck no. at six and yours is kicking down. Yeah. It's such a talky engine on this, it's incredible. Yeah, it is. Absolutely there's, incredible. There's nothing wrong with a gold wing though. No, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's just slow. <laughs> it's not slow. It's not as fast as the BMW, I totally accept it. But that doesn't mean that the Honda's slow. I think BMW claim a 0, 0 to, I think it was 0 to 60 in like 3.1 3 seconds on this. That is ridiculous, isn't it? Something ridiculous like that on the website I read. Greg, Greg's just telling me he's buying one. He's just saying he's buying one. He's, <laughs> he's hating himself for it. He's punishing himself for liking the Goldbergs. Yeah, it, it is easy around town. He's saying how, how easy it is around town. He loves it. No, yeah, no really, that's true. Right, here we go. So, parking's here. We'll park these up and then the hovercraft will be arriving over there. And I've actually spoken to the uh, their media people and I might better get behind the barrier and actually get some footage of it pulling up. MC only, that's us. Right, let's tuck in and we're, we're getting both in here. Motorcycle parking only. Let's hope the traffic warden still classes these as motorcycles. <laughs> yeah, I'm in, mate. Let's do it. So we're in South Sea. We're now going to go across to the island. I said we, you know, we are going to the Isle of Wight today. I said we would be, so we're going on the, on the hovercraft. And I, I sent in advance an email to Stephen behind me there. He's, he's hiding. There he is. <laughs> who's the media guy for Hover Travel and he's arranged for us to come behind the barriers and get some decent footage of the hovercraft coming up and everything so uh, absolutely fantastic but it's due to arrive I think shortly Stephen isn't it now about 20 past 12 should be here it's going to be flying up the beach here literally 
So this is the only, what do you say, Steve? The, the only, the only year-round commercial passenger hovercraft service in the, in the world. world. And is where's the one well? which isn't the year-round? Do you know? Where it's not many, anyway, is there? Yeah, there's, there's one in Canada that you, is, happens when, when the ice bridge melts. The Inuits, the local indigenous ah. population, they, they they can't get any boats to get across. So right. what they use is they, the, 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 the um, Canadian government have set up a hovercraft service, which is, I mean, it's two or three times a week, but it gives them a chance to get yeah, groceries yeah, yeah. and posts yeah. and all the rest of it. Yeah. And then when it freezes again, yeah. the, the hovercraft's not used. They made in the UK. Obviously, it's a, yeah. UK, it's a British invention, isn't it? Yeah, but, but they were made in Southampton. Oh, really? Right. And those ones I was talking to you about, they're actually being made even closer in Porchester. Oh, yeah. really? Just, just oh, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. Yeah. So, so, yeah, they're building those ones there. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's great because it was invented in Britain, yeah. made and manufactured, designed in Britain, and now it's operated Operating. and maintained in Britain. So, Fantastic. Right. Here it comes, though. Look at this. Here it comes. Big old Union Jack on the front. Love yeah. it. Here it comes. Bird's eye view. the power and it sinks. There you go guys, I promise you a hovercraft. <laughs> There's a hovercraft. Here we go, hovercraft. Oh yeah, yeah. good to meet you. Oh yeah. Good. How are you doing? Oh, it's yeah, big, isn't it? too cold, yeah. Spacious, no, isn't it? Good. Yeah, on the back here. Fantastic, yeah. Superb. Oh, it's nice to be inside and warm, isn't it? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> the uh, stewardess is just going around. John, John, vodka, honey. Just doing his cider. Ten minutes to the Isle of Wight. If you're in a small dinghy or a small sailboat, this just goes straight over you. Just crushes <laughs> you. <laughs> That's the turn. Just goes straight through everything. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon we could have got the bikes in there. I reckon there was room for the bikes in the middle there, wasn't there? And there's a ramp, wasn't there? There's a ramp. We could have driven, <laughs> <laughs> creeped them straight on. <laughs> And we're there, 10 minutes to the Isle of Wight. It's so fast, isn't it? And then we sink down there. There we go. Welcome. You got your passport ready? <laughs> An app, don't forget to set your watches. <laughs> Hour ahead. Going up to the cockpit. That's not easy to, it's not <laughs> easy to get up, is it? Yeah, blank check's always a good. The pilot's going to come out, give us a quick run through. These are my four ballast tanks. Yeah. So I can adjust the craft anywhere okay, I choose. Okay, well, pulling water on them, water yep. on Oh, wow. No, okay. there's water already in there. There's water, right, and that pumps it around the craft to... I do with this. Ah, oh, okay. Wherever I put that is where yeah. the water is going. Oh, wow. So if everybody gets on on a sunny day and they want to look out that side, they'll all wander over there, sit down and look out that side. But I can tell um, from the cameras downstairs, which are behind you, where they're sitting. Because if you lift up and you're trimmed very heavily by the stern, then the craft will just, just drag. Just go that way. Oh, I see. It, so has, it has to be on an even keel. So you have to, before you set off, you check everyone's seated and adjust the ballast accordingly. Yeah, and, and then, then as soon as I lift up, I'm adjusting you're again. Adjusting again. Oh, a little wow. bit. If you want to turn right, you push right. Right. If you do that on a bicycle, you go left. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. And they're driving the eight rudders that you see there moving. Oh, up. I see, see them oh, the actual now? rudder behind the propellers. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, I see that drives those. Eight of them for each. Wow. Here I've got the pitch levers, so that will alter the pitch of the blades. Ah, the pitch of the blades, right. So I can, that's zero, that's null. This is a stern and increasing. Sort of like, like a that's helicopter, it. if you like, a helicopter sort of pitch adjustment, is it? Or yeah, a lot of power boats have got very Oh, have they? So okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or I guess those really high power. You don't have to go into neutral uh, and then go see. into a stern. Yeah, yeah. I can be on full power and go from full head to full stern. Right. So these are obviously the throttles. Port engine, starboard engine. So that's zero, that, that's a cruise, this is that's, that's max. A... So when you're in, in motion going along, are you constantly correcting ballast? Are you constantly yes. adjusting the pitch on the blades? Yes, and, and so, steering. So it's almost like, it's really like a helicopter where you're constantly giving input to keep yeah. it headed in the right direction. Um, to be able to steer with your feet means both hands are free, yeah. and they need to be because there's so much You're going on, wow. ballasting and trimming and 
yeah. ad adjusting on these panels nav instruments. Right, well, thanks very much indeed for that. It's okay. Lunch time. It's hard work, this YouTube business, Greg, isn't it? Oh, the work's finest. Oh, the work's finest. Freshly caught today. Freshly Fishing. caught. <laughs> Goujons. <laughs> Freshly caught. <laughs> <laughs> it's this rare fish breed in, this, in these waters. Goujons. Goujons, yeah, exactly. They, they, they basically reel them in with batter on, which I think is amazing. It's a reason to move here, isn't it? <laughs> Battered fish straight from the sea. <laughs> it's incredible. And, uh, and a couple of shandies, just, just to wash it down. Well, there we go. Lunch is served. So we've been to the Isle of Wight, we've had a lovely little lunch. I mean, I've got, I've got to thank Stephen and the hovercraft personnel for, for giving me that access to the cockpit. And that was just incredible, Greg. It was like VIP treatment, wasn't it? It was absolutely unbelievable. What I'm going to do, there's so much info that, that we were given there. There's too much to you know, put into this video. There's so much info he gave us, there's going to be a separate video all about the hovercraft because it's just incredible. So, um, but I've included a little bit in this video, but I will be following up with another video of the cockpit tour of the hovercraft, talk through everything. So it was amazing. So that's the other white, that's the hovercraft. Now we're going to swap bikes back and just do, we've got some, we think we know what we like, what we don't like, but this will just confirm what we're thinking. I think it depends what you want, what other bikes you own as well. So if, if you just want one bike and no other bikes, the BMW is more versatile, isn't it? It can give you that thrill in the twisties, it's faster, it's more performance orientated, but I don't think it's quite as nice as a touring machine as what the Goldwing is. I think the Goldwing wings are for the wins for the ultimate touring experience. I would agree but it's, it's still very close and don't read into that that this is not good at touring because just around town now it still is so very soft and smooth. It's just got more of everything in terms of power which you may not want, you may want it. And I'm with you, what, if you only have one bike, this is probably a little bit more versatile, isn't it? Yeah, that, uh, and that engine, I know the engine in this is incredible, isn't it? It sounds like, you know, it's an incredible characterful engine in the Goldwing, but the, that, that engine in the K1600, I mean, what an engineering marvel. That engine's got so much torque from low down, it's so smooth, it's so powerful. That engine's incredible, isn't it? It's unusual for me, but I think both bikes, for what they've been built for, score almost perfectly on all fronts but no no copping out no copping out which one would you have um i think i would have the gold wing because i think i prefer the all-day comfort and the fact that it's so relaxing to ride the suspension's amazing and i think i prefer the look of it actually and I think that alone, you know, I just think, for me personally, I think it just looks a little bit nicer. Not not nicer in terms of quality, just nicer styling. Yeah, they're both incredible quality, aren't they? I mean, we, we were saying when your when your camera ran out, you know, ridden in isolation, either of these bikes is incredible, and the quality of them, you know, they're they're both engineering masterpieces, aren't they? They are. They're the premium bikes in the range and they feel like it. You feel like, you know, they're expensive bikes, they're expensive machines, but you you can see why. You don't feel short change, do you? Sort of riding it for how much they cost. It feels like it's a premium bit of kit. And I think the other thing that surprised me is before we even picked them up or had them delivered, I assumed naively that the Goldwing would be loads better in this category. And whilst I would pick it, but only marginally, the BMW surprised me and how amazing it is also. It's bloody good. For me, I think, I'm still not entirely sure because I think that will be incredible on dry road. I think you could really chuck that around. And so I, I'm not entirely made my mind up yet, but I, I think I would also take the Goldwing. But I think it's really, really close. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, we were saying over lunch, I, mean, I think in a weird way, a lot of the detail of the BMW is better than the Goldwing. The brakes, I think, are better on the BMW. The feel of the brakes as well, you know, they feel lovely. They're a little bit wooden on the Honda, and, you know, there's, you have to really want a brake to, to brake. But even though it's slightly worse in some areas, I think overall it's better. And I know that is just a weird thing to say, but, you know, they've just made the whole thing very easy and very... It's like driving a big S-Class Mercedes, I think. And I think the DCT 
works so well on this bike. I, I wouldn't consider it without the DCT. After riding the BMW, I, 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 it, I want it to be automatic, you know? I want it to be like this, and I think that's why I'm sort of preferring this, because in town with the DCT, it's just effortless, isn't it? There's no clutch, you haven't got way back. It just, it's just so effortless, and I think that, what, what gives it that little edge above the BMW, I think. What a day, what a day we've had. It's been absolutely amazing, hasn't it? Really, really good. Um, I've never been so warm on a bike in this weather. Yeah, and exactly. I normally freeze, so I don't know what you're like, but I suffer from the cold a lot worse than you, you don't really I? really suffer. I've got and, a uh, built-in insulation. Yeah, the wind protection has been, it's incredible on both bikes. I think the Goldwing is slightly better for wind yeah. protection. It's got a bigger screen, but not just the screen, the legs. Um, but don't think for a second that the K1600B isn't good because it's also they're very both, good. Very, they're very they're good. both so close and we had a little bit of a chat which one of the cameras might not have recorded so it's just while we're doing it again now but when we were riding back we were saying that if you're own, if you just want, if you've only got one bike, if you only afford to have one bike. And which you most want, people can. Which, which most people can, you know, we're lucky yeah. enough to have yeah. multiple bikes but if you can only really afford one bike the BMW is the more versatile bike out of the two. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. faster, it handles better. Yeah. It does touring pretty damn well. And the slow speed stuff also is so balanced, so smooth. Yeah. The engine's so flexible. I mean, you know, third gear, you can almost stop and it will just pull, but with no protesting, it's beautiful yeah. engine. It's, it's so flexible, isn't it's it? It's so flexible and the suspension settings make a big difference. So if you want to get a bit sporty, it can do it. It's a, yeah. it's a really impressive bit of engineering, actually. It is, it's yeah. an incredible, incredible bike. Yeah, definitely. But if, but if you're lucky enough to have a couple of bikes <laughs> and you... And, and you want the ultimate bike for touring alone, yeah. I think it's the Goldberg. It's got better weather protection. <coughs> that yeah. Boxer engine is got a load of character, isn't it? It's got yeah. enough power. It's not as fast as the BMW, but it's got a load of power. Yeah. Um, the, I think the DCT, for me, was the biggest surprise with this bike. No, when, I, I agree. And it works, it, it complements it so well, doesn't it? Well, it's the first time I've ever ridden a DCT. Uh, and I know that they get really, really good, uh, you know, feedback and reviews. And on the Goldwing, if I bought one, I would 100% go for the yeah. DCT and I'd highly recommend it. So if you've never tried it, I didn't miss the clutch. I thought I'd be going for the clutch the whole time. You don't. I like the fact that it's conventional brakes with a foot and a handbrake. So it still feels like a motorcycle. Yeah. And the gears, they're properly mechanically engaged. So it feels, it feels amazing it's, and it's so easy. Isn't it's it? not like, it doesn't, doesn't feel like a moped or an electric no. bike. You, you, you feel like you've got that gear. It feels like a motorbike, yeah. completely. It's nothing like a moped, which I thought I was worried it might feel like yeah. a moped or yeah. a scooter, and it doesn't. Yeah. It's so impressive, the Goldwing, and it's, it's, it, they're both faultless and they're both fantastic bikes and if you bought either of them in this category i'm certain you would be very very happy with i what mean you I, I come into this thinking we all know the gold going to win yeah you know, that's, we, that's we, how I all, all, what you read online you think the gold wing will win but yeah. that has surprised me how and, good it is and me as well it, it's a seriously amazing bit of care yeah. and the build quality at every level is just it's 10 out of 10 amazing i mean it's a good bit. It's a really good bike. I think I prefer the Honda Goldwing, just the looks a little yeah. bit. This is a bit of a unique styling, I think it's probably fair to say. I like it, but it's a bit unique, whereas the yeah. Goldwing, I think, just looks a little bit nicer. But they're so close. And, and I think it's worth mentioning, which I think we, you mentioned before, the Goldwing is a little bit more expensive. It is, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, that is another consideration. And I think maybe two to three thousand pounds. Two to three thousand more expensive this you know, one. And that's not even the fully spec one. You know, no, you exactly. Can go which, then you know, put extras on. Exactly, which is not to be sniffed at at all, I don't think. So, yeah. um, I think if you're in the market, you've got to try both. Um, and uh, yeah, it's unusual that we both have a review where we like them both so much. I mean, yeah. I'd score them both at over nine out of ten, maybe close to ten out of ten for what they are. Yeah. yeah, they do it brilliantly, absolutely brilliant. Incredible machines. Got to yeah. say a massive, massive thank you to BMoto Definitely. for sponsoring our little yeah. trip today. Got my own page on BMoto. I've even got my own hotline. I've got the Chops hotline, so I'll put the number on the screen. So Have when you double you come... that if you find that hotline. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the price will go up, obviously. Um, but yeah, it won't, honestly. But if you call that number, then they know the calls from me. So, you know, it helps the channel as well. So, yeah, but fantastic. Thanks so much for watching. We're going to do more of these style of videos like this with this comparison, this format. I think it works really, really well. So if you like what you're seeing, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and we'll both see you on the next video. Cheers, guys. Cheers.